All right, so now in your books, this is going to be 2.4. Let me change the color there. So it's going to be 2.4 in your books, and we are talking about congruent supplements and complements. Your objective for this lesson, there's only one. By the end, you should be able to prove angles congruent by means of four new theorems. Okay, so let's start with the first one. Theorem 4 states that if angles are supplementary to the same angle, then they are congruent. The shortened way of writing this is if supplementary, same angle, then congruent. Much shorter way of writing it for you. So basically what we have is, okay, so say we have angle 1. And we can say angle 2 is supplementary to angle 1. And then we say angle 3 is supplementary to angle 1. Our conclusion would be angle 2 is congruent to angle 3 because of this. Does that make sense? So if you have two separate angles that are congruent to the same angle, or that are supplementary to the same angle, I should say, then they are both also congruent. Make sense? Should be easy enough. Theorem 5 states that if angles are supplementary to congruent angles, then they are congruent. And the shortened way, if supplementary, congruent angles, then congruent. So you can just write it like this on a proof. Okay? So make sure you're making note of that. So let's say we have angle A and angle C, and we know that they're congruent. Okay? And we know that angle B is supplementary to angle A. And we know that angle D is supplementary to angle C. So because angle A and angle C are congruent, then angle B must also be congruent to angle D. Hopefully that makes sense. Basically we're saying, so for, exa for example, if this was 70 and this was 70, what could we say the measure of angle B and D are? Because these are both congruent, so they have the same measure, so angle B would have to be 110, angle D would also have to be 110. So that's just a numerical example, of hopefully, that helps you will understand it a bit. Now, if theorem 6 and theorem 7 are basically identical to theorem 4 and theorem 5, respectively, except now we're talking about complementary angles. So remember, supplementary, 180 degrees. Complementary, 90 degrees. So if angles are complementary to the same angle, then they are congruent. Write it this way. If complementary in parentheses, same angle, then congruent. And theorem 7 is, if angles are complementary to congruent angles, then they are congruent. So you write it like so. Like this right here. So these are the two that you're going to use in proofs. You cannot use just theorem 6 and theorem 7 as a reason. You can't just write theorem 6 and theorem 7. You must write these. Okay? Be aware of that. <clears throat> so let's take a look at some examples of how you'd use this in a proof. So our given is angle 1 is supplementary to angle 2. Angle 3 is supplementary to angle 4, and that angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. And we need to prove that angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. Really, really easy proof. If I wanted to do this in two steps, I could, but I decided to split up the givens and say angle 1 is supplementary to angle 2, given. Angle 3 is supplementary to angle 4, given. And angle 1 is congruent to angle 4, given. Therefore, Angle 2 is congruent to angle 3 because if supplementary, if two angles are supplementary to congruent angles, then they are congruent to each other. Easy enough. Second example. We are given that A is complementary to angle C and DBC is complementary to angle C. And we need to prove that angle A is congruent to angle DBC. So our statements again are givens. And our proof, and a reason would be if complementary to the same angle, then the two angles are congruent. Easy enough concept, pretty uh, simple. Um, you're, of course, going to get examples that involve like algebra and binding X and Y and all that, but the basic concept is there and it's really easy as long as you understand it, which is, I expect that you guys will.